Hello, today we're going to talk about our new generation M221 PLC, which is used to replace our old Twiddle PLC. In my hand, I have a book controller, which is one of the series of our, of our M221 PLC. We still have a, another series called M221 controller, which is wider with a cartridge slot there so you can use that to extend the I.O. and also the communication module so as you can see from uh, this controller we have our I.O. screw terminals and also we have this um, LED panel used to show you the PLC status and also the IO status. You can go to the hardware menu for the detailed information of these uh, status LEDs. Okay. And then we have this analog input uh, slot. This has two analog inputs channel, but only available to 0 to 10 volt, not the current 4 to 20 milliamp. And down there we have two RJ45 ports. The top one is the serial port and then the bottom one with the, the green label around is the internet port. The serial port, make sure you use the serial cable to connect it to the computer or to the HMI or other Modbus devices. Make sure you don't use the internet cable because that might damage the PLC. Down the bottom you have the Ethernet port. On top of this Ethernet port, as you can see, we have the MAC address, this little white characters. This MAC address is unique to every unit. Um, we can use this to identify the default IP address of this device. As you can see, we we have this uh, MAC address with the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, so six part hexadecimal numbers. The default IP address will be ten dot ten dot the last hexadecimal the last two hexadecimal numbers translated to the decimal number. For example, see this one? The last second we have 1b, so which is 27 in decimal. And the last one we have c4, which is 196 in decimal. So the default IP address of this unit will be 10.10.27.196. Then we move on to, to the cover inside. As you can see, we've got a SD slot and a, a run stop switch there. So the SD slot is used to hold the SD card. SD card is used to back up and restore the user application and back up and restore the firmware also can be used to back up or delete the error log file of the controller. By using this wrong stop switch, you don't have to use the software to turn the PLC into wrong mode or stop mode. And Next, we can see down the bottom, we have a mini USB port. This mini USB port can be used to transfer the user application from our software so machine basic to this controller. And the new feature is you don't have to power up this PLC in order to download the project you can only connect the cable 
from this mini USB to the laptop to power to power it up in order to transfer the program. Later on, we're gonna show you how to do this. Let's move to the top. On the top here, you can see a battery slot. So if we take this one off, you can see there's a lithium battery here. This battery is replaceable. The type is Panasonic BR2032. The reason we have this battery here is because we need we have a real-time clock built into this controller so we can use the battery to maintain the RTC and also to save all the data if there is a power interruption happened. The backup life for this battery is at least a one year at 25 degree maximum. If you run this controller in a higher temperature environment, the timer will be reduced. Thank you.